Hello everybody. Uh, today I'll discuss the basics of the fluid flow uh, as a introduction to the material processing part of that. So actually the fluid flow analysis is very important and we can see there are so many applications in material processing technology. The flow for example the steel processing even for the casting process in welding process also the flow analysis is very significant and to understand the formation of the different kind of the defects or in the proper design of the different die and these uh, the process modification of the process all kind of the uh, analysis is possible just by understanding the uh, fluid flow that's why I have included this particular uh, topic um, in this uh, course. Now we start very basic things of the fluid flow and first we start with the uh, different uh, properties of the fluid which is associated with we, need to know that but uh, in general we can say the fluid mechanics I think you have studied the basic subjects and uh, probably you have studied this fluid mechanics subject but anyway I am just going through the very basic parts which is might be significant or will be able to understand such that you it will get some application in the different manufacturing processes. So in this case the fluid is the branch of science deals with the deals with the fluid's behavior either under rest or in motion both the conditions are applicable in the different manufacturing processes. So we can describe from the point of view the static, kinematics and dynamic behavior of the fluid is studied and there are different conditions of course. But remember that uh, fluid we are taking in general but liquid and ga gas both are included in the terminology the fluids. So that is why fluid mechanics means we understand that is either liquid and gas both are included in there. But with reference to the uh, solid mechanics because when you try to understand the solid mechanics we understand that with the application of the force it will create the uh, normal stress uh, deformation and in very specific cases there might be the shear stress also. But fluid when you try to deform the fluid it will be always subjected to some kind of the shear stress and we represent the shear stress and the deformation behavior we represent in terms of the constant strain rate for the application of the constant shear stress in the uh, in the and the fluid. So from that perspective that when you understand the shear stress we represent the viscous and in which it flow is like that viscous flow uh, is the near about the boundary layer if you remember that near about the boundary layer we can define the boundary layer thickness also and um, thermal boundary layer as well as the velocity boundary layer both we can define but when the fluid is contact with the uh, the interface near about the hot surface then gradually the there is a variation of the uh, fluid velocity some gradient exists and then in this case the we can say the viscous flow so is the confined to the shear stress uh, between the uh, near about the uh, boundary layer but gradually the when there is a boundary layer means the from there is some velocity gradient exist and that velocity gradient is very equivalent or proportional to the uh, shear stress but when you reach to the free stream close to the free stream velocity of the fluid in that case we cannot find out the gradient so therefore in that cases the shear stress is negligible and then it, it is called the inviscid flow if you see this is the this two part we have divided it means that uh, it is very close to that it is a basically almost reached to the uh, free stream velocity but here remaining part there is a gradient exists so that means shear stress exists and uh, that is why it is called the viscous flow. So that is why viscosity is the property of the uh, fluid we can we can see different law of uh, this thing how you can relate the between the shear stress and the velocity gradient. Now we see that sometimes we say the internal flow and external flow so when the flow within the um, inside the pipe this is called the internal flow and external flow if you see the flow over an object that we can uh, say this is kind of the external flow. Now there is another variant that sometimes is a laminar flow and turbulent flow. So laminar flow is the flow is in a relatively ordered space but in case of the turbulent flow the it is basically highly disordered. So that is this is the basic difference between the ordered flow and highly disordered flow I mean to say the laminar flow and uh, turbulent flow or there is a particular number Reynolds number based on that we can distinguish whether it is laminar flow or whether it is a turbulent flow. There is another variant of the flow of the liquid that is called the natural flow and the forced flow. So natural flow suppose heated plate is there in the contact with which is in contact with the uh, atmospheric air but since the plate is heated so there might be some near about the plate the air will be the heated and away from this thing 
the temperature should be less. So, in between there might be having some kind of the, the density differences and that will bring to some kind of the flow from one particular direction. That is called the natural flow of the uh, fluid which is in, in contact with the heated plate. Now, it might be possible that sometimes we can consider the forced flow. So, forced flow means some external device we can utilize and then we can try to uh, flow the air uh, surrounding the one solid medium or that is called the over, over a plate or sometimes we can even for the heated plate also. That means when the flow is added by some external devices, in that case that flow is called the forced flow. Then other variant the steady flow and unsteady flow. The steady flow you understand if the flow is basically independent of the time. So, at any point if you consider there is a no change in the flow at, at a particular point with respect to time then we can consider this as a steady state flow. And other way unsteady flow when the flow is varies basically with respect to time then we can say this is the unsteady flow. Similarly, sometimes the analysis can be done one dimensional flow, two dimensional, three dimensional flow. So, one dimensional analysis is defined according to the direction of the velocity flow. So, only one direction velocity flow is there. You can see the second figure is a two different direction, two dimensional flow and here the third figure it indicates the uh, three dimensional flow field. So, all different kind of the analysis is usually available associated with the any kind of the material processing technology. So, that is why you need to able to distinguish the different variant of the, the flow. I mean the steady state flow, unsteady flow, one dimensional, two dimensional, three dimensional flow, natural flow, forced flow, laminar flow and turbulent flow. So, all are useful there for the analysis. Now, I come to the different and uh, relevant to this uh, basics of the fluid flow that is the system surrounding and the boundary also. So, how you can distinguish the system surrounding and boundary and what is the role to define the domain of the analysis which is usually we do in, in case of the any, any kind of the material processing uh, technology. Now, we see the system is that particular one we space we fix and that uh, space of the matter that is the region or the space of the matter that is chosen for the analysis or for the study that space we can say this is the system because with uh, based on this system uh, system might be having some boundary due to distinguish from the surrounding so that boundary uh, the system is surrounded by boundary and sometime some interaction might happen uh, through the boundary but to the surrounding so, that is why boundaries is basically imaginary physical surface that is separating the system using some kind of the uh, boundary. So, that is why system can be defined as the closed system, open system, closed system means define the only energy exchange from the surroundings. So, through the surroundings there might be only energy exchange that is called the closed system and open system where the energy and mass both can exchange from the surroundings then it is called the uh, open system. Now, we know that this uh, closed system is the uh, sometimes we define also control mass and open system we can sometimes term as the control volume and, and uh, but there is another system that is called the isolated system. In this case the no energy uh, and no mass changes uh, from with the surroundings then it is called the isolated system. We can see that some example also here is the closed system if is the control mass is there but with the uh, surrounding this is the uh, uh, the boundary and we can say the surrounding so in this cases only energy can exchange to this you can supply the heat energy to the system then but in this cases the mass is controlled here um, and this type of system is called the closed system but if you take an example there is some fluid entering uh, this section and it is go out of this section. So, in this case both energy and mass both can exchange the enter inside the uh, system and goes outside the system. So, that is why this is the, the open system and this is the, uh, the domain is some called the control volume domain and here the domain is called the control mass. So, this concept we can derive the different equations or of course before that we need to know the different properties, fluid properties which associated with the flow analysis. One is the density, we know the density is the ratio of the mass and volume of the fluid and we know the density mass by volume unit equal to SI unit kg per meter cube. 
Sometimes we use this terminology as weight density. Weight density is the ratio of the weight of the fluid to its volume. So, weight of the fluid means mass into g and volume we can say that volume and that becomes rho into g because mass by volume is the density that is why rho into g and here you can see the uh, unit can be newton per uh, meter cube. Similarly, specific volume sometimes we use this terminology also volume occupied by the unit mass of the fluid that means specific volume can be defined the volume per unit mass the volume divided by mass so 1 by rho opposite of that inverse of that row that indicates the specific volume. So, definitely its units should be meter cube per kg and the specific gravity also uh, use sometimes the we can specific means we take we compare certain thing we taking some reference value. So, here when the ratio of the density or weight density of a fluid uh, to density or the weight density of the some standard fluid then that ratio is called the uh, specific gravity. For example, standard fluids for the liquid and gases are water and air. So, that is the st standard fluid that means we are basically comparing with, take, with uh, some reference value. Uh, in this case, we consider the reference value of the water and air. So, that is why specific weight gravity is defined the weight density uh, of the liquid or gas that we can choose and but weight density of the uh, water or air. So, that ratio represents the specific gravity that means we, we try to represent the weight density how we relative to the weight density of the water and air. Then another uh, property of the fluid that is called the viscosity. Uh, it is the property of the fluid that offers resistance to the adjacent flowing layer. We see that the resistance that means when you try to represent the one layer to another layer. Uh, they try to share with respect to each other then that might be having some resistance. So, that resistance is represented in terms of the uh, viscosity. So, here mathematically we can define that two layers of the fluid try to move for example, this this fluid at this particular layer it is try to move with the velocity u, but in this case it little velocity more in this is the u plus du and that velocity changes might happen over the distance dy because y axis is this one. So, dy and the velocity profile uh, this direction. So, dy and here the change of the velocity from this to here du and over the distance dy. Now, the shear stress developed between the layers is actually basically proportional to the velocity gradient. Here we can see this du by dy is actually represent the gradient here the velocity gradient because we know the in when you try to in Cartesian coordinate system the x and y in the curve we can represent the any curve. So, slope is defined dy by dx. Similarly, here the slope is defined dy equivalent to uh, in this case uh, gradient dy by dx, but in this case uh, we can see the change of the velocity du with respect to distance y. So, that is why uh, it is du by dy actually the velocity profile in this case uh, the velocity is varying with this thing and uh, over the distance y. So, uh, this uh, du by um, here du by dy it represents the velocity gradient. So, where mu is the coefficient of the viscosity uh, in this case we say that this velocity gradient du by dy is basically shear stress is proportional to that. So, amount of the shear stress depends on the what is the amount of the uh, velocity gradient. So, that uh, constant of proportionality is represent the uh, this uh, viscosity here tau equal to du by dy where tau equal to mu into du by dy. So, here this mu constant of proportionality is termed at the uh, coefficient of the viscosity or only viscosity the unit of this thing Pascal second. So, here du by dy is also known as the rate of the shear strain or the rate of the uh, rate of the shear deformation or it is called the uh, velocity gradient it can be called the velocity gradient. Now, this fluid for which the rate of the shear strain is proportional to the shear strain is known as the Newtonian fluid. So, that means when we are linking between the shear stress and the velocity uh, gradient or shear stress uh, the rate of the shear strain du by dy we link it between the shear stress and this one 
then it might be having some linear relationship or non-linear relationship. But when this linear relationship exists because we express here, it represents the linear relationship between the shear stress and the uh, shear strain rate. So, when this linear relationship exists, then we say this type of the behavior of the fluid is known as the Newtonian fluid. And when it exists the arm, some kind of the other non-linear behavior, we can say the non-Newtonian fluid. Now, other important properties that is called the surface tension, which is have very uh, uh, wide applications uh, to understand the different manufacturing processes. Now, what we can represent the surface tension? Actually, surface tension exists when there is a two different medium. So, at the interface, when interacting at the uh, two different medium, so at the interface, there existence of the surface tension force, but it can be defined something like that. The tensile force acting at the surface on the immiscible fluid. So, that means suppose this is the air, uh, water is there and water is in contact with the air. So, definitely two, two medium is there and they are not mixing here. So, at the interface there might be having, must be having some kind of the surface tension force. So, immiscible fluid at the tensile force is acting at the surface which is known as the surface tension. So, it basically behaves like a stretch electric elastic membrane. So, see, see this surface tension it looks uh, behaves like a stretch uh, elastic membrane and in this uh, interpretation of this thing like that the attraction force acting between the molecules of the fluid that is true the between the molecules of the fluid but net attraction force is balance for the molecule inside the volume. So, when whatever inside the volume, however, net tensile force is acting on the molecule on the surface. So, net tensile force is basically, suppose in the free surface, here you can see uh, the this all forces are acting here, it is a uh, neutralized here, but here we can get some unbalanced force also at the interface, uh, at the free surface. So, then this unbalanced force will be try to make balance in the represent in the form of a surface tension force when at the free surface means basically it is interacting with the air. So, at the interface there might be some tensile ten, uh, force might be act, acting on the surface which is uh, results in the surface tension force. Now, we see the role of the surface tension force in the material processing in case of the welding and the soldering process. So, we know the uh, in welding process we usually understand that if the presence of the surface active elements is actually change the surface tension force when there is a if we consider the change in the surface tension force that actually influence the uh, weld pool shape also. We will discuss uh, later on when we try to discuss about the uh, welding process. So, therefore, here the correct uh, estimation of the surface tension force is required to understand the effect of the surface active elements in welding process. Even in case of the soldering process also we try to perform the soldering process joint between the two parent metal and the, the bar solder metal is actually uh, melt and you will try to uh, bridge between the two parent metal and here proper filling of the gap is basically maintained or understood is by the surface tension force. So, here we need to understand the surface tension force that actually explain about the joint strain in case of the soldering process. Even for the casting and the molding also definitely the flow, uh, flow of the liquid metal inside the mold which is also influenced by the surface tension force. In case of the additive manufacturing the effect of the droplet formation, the transport of the droplet all one of the driving force in all these cases is the surface tension force to decide the shape of the, the molten pool or shape of the uh, droplet. So, that is why we see this type of the manufacturing process we can find the application of the uh, surface tension force. And next part is the uh, basic parts of the fluid flow associativity that is the pressure. So, we know the pressure is defined as the normal force exerted by the fluid per unit area. We represent the, the force per unit area uh, in case of the pressure also and unit of the pressure force by area and it is a Newton per meter square. So, or it is sometimes it is known as the Pascal also. So, 1 Pascal equal to 1 Newton per meter square. Now, sometimes you can say the absolute pressure and the gauge pressure also in a, in a when you try to analyze the uh, fluids. Then gauge pressure means we take some reference of the uh, atmospheric pressure. So, gauge pressure is above the atmospheric pressure. So, so here the reference point is the 
the one atmospheric pressure and based on that we define the gauge pressure. But similarly when you try to mention the absolute pressure value, so we take p equal to 0 that means at this 0 as I take as a reference with respect to that we can define the absolute pressure. And uh, for example, the atmospheric pressure P atmospheric pressure, here the absolute pressure is the 1 atmospheric pressure, but gauge pressure is the 0 in this case because P atmospheric pressure that is the reference point. Now this we already know this thing pressure variation with respect to depth in a liquid, but I am just repeating the, this thing just to understand and we will be able to apply to solve the different kind of the problem associated with the the different manufacturing processes. Now variation, pressure variation with depth, we consider that the cross section area A filled with the liquid of density rho, so uniform density, this container uh, density and now we consider two different point P1 and uh, P2 acting the pressure over a uh, uh, elemental length delta H. So now we take this particular element, the pressure is acting here the uh, because of the uh, above liquid uh, at this point, this liquid pressure is acting here uh, P1A. So P1A is acting pressure here and at this point P2A is acting and the weight of this liquid column is basically uh, mass into G. So mass into rho into volume, volume with the cross section area into delta H that indicates the volume and the G. So this is the mass of this, uh, force of this or we can say weight of this. Uh, elemental uh, liquid. Now balancing the force at the bottom layer of the fluid is gives basically P2A at this point what is the total pressure acting which, which is equi equal to P1A plus this mass. So P1A plus mass which is balanced by the P2A. So at this point opposite direction it, um, that means we are we are considering, considering this opposite direction it is acting. So it is balanced by this thing. Now from here we can say the P2 minus P1 equal to rho G into delta H. So here you see the pressure difference between the two points uh, in the constant density and this is static fluid. So remember we have we can analyze we are assuming this is the fluid is static. So here this a pressure difference is basically directly proportional to the vertical distance between them. So it is P2, the pressure difference between these two points P2 minus P1 is basically proportional to the delta H because we can see the density is constant uh, for this particular fluid and the G is also constant. So it is proportional to the delta H. So that is why it depends on the this uh, height of the uh, liquid column in this case. Now look into another part that is called the buoyancy. So buoyancy is that when one uh, object is partially or fully immersed in a liquid, they, it, it can be subjected to some kind of the upward force acting on this thing. And this upward force is known as the uh, buoyancy force. So here you can see the rise of the pressure increasing the because we know along with the depth increasing the pr pressure also increases. So rise in the pressure by increasing the depth uh, in the liquid that actually creates some kind of the uh, the creates uh, the buoyancy force on this particular body. If you see at this particular point the uh, pressure is rho g h into a, but at this point pressure into rho g at the distance delta h. So rho g h plus delta h a. So it is a pressure increases and here also pressure is this one at this top point and bottom point. So that means rise in pressure with the presence of this body which is immersed inside the liquid that actually the difference is represents in the form of a buoyancy force. So we can see the total vertical force, buoyancy force which is equal to the difference of the vertical uh, forces and because at this point pressure is there and at this point pressure are different. So this unbalanced things will be represented in terms of the buoyancy force and it is acting in the vertical direction only. Now this unbalanced force Fb at a distance uh, h plus delta h that is a rho g h plus delta h into a minus of rho g h. So rho g h into a. Basically the difference and we get the buoyancy force is the fp rho g into v. So v is the volume of the, the liquid displaced by this particular object. So it means that this uh, volume of the, this volume is equivalent to the, the uh, this object. So but remember which is other way represent this volume is basically the volume which is equivalent to the displaced by this object. So here we can see the buoyancy force. So some fluid flow application buoyancy force is one of the 
driving force to decide the flow pattern uh, when you try to do the analysis the molten material flow in any either casting process or in case of the welding process. Now try to look into the two uh, different approaches in the uh, fluid flow analysis. So, here we see the two different approaches or which is un comes under the kinematics of fluids. So, it is basically study of the motion of the fluid and without considering the forces and movement. Uh, so, not we just focus on the study on the motion of the fluid. So, that depends on the kinematics, but how what we can analyze uh, the what can be the approaches to analyze this motion of the fluid. So, study of the fluid and how describe the motion of the fluid using the uh, position, velocity and acceleration field uh, for the individual particle in a control volume. So, we know we have already defined the control volume in this case uh, within the control volume we take this as a variable the what is the position of the fluid particle what is the velocity of the particle and what is the acceleration field of this individual particle we just analyze these things and which is under the kinematics of fluid and we follow two different approach one is the lagrangian approach another is the eulerian approach in this case the lagrangian approach the position vector we always track to the position of the particle so, for example, position vector of the particle is x bar and the at this particle velocity equal to represented by the v vector individual particle and we always try to the in this particular approach the individual particle is tracked basically to describe the motion of the h particle. But when we in case of the fluid flow analysis sometimes it is very difficult to make the motion of the h particle and to track to store the deformation of the h particle is sometimes difficult. So, therefore, there is another approach that is Eulerian approach. So, Eulerian approach is basically over the finite or the control volume domain in which the fluid flow occurs. Uh, we can try to define the flow field uh, in where entering to the control volume and we track the velocity of the, the fluid. So, here scalar field, pressure field and the vector velocity acceleration field are defined within the control. For example, the pressure field defined in the in, in this case but in this case we are not individually tracking the movement of the uh, particle but within the control volume we represents uh, for example within the control flow it, it entering this with certain velocity so that velocity uh, displacement and the pressure can be represent the in terms of the x y z and t so in this case the p equal to x y z velocity in the the velocity component x y z direction and the with varying with respect to time t and similarly acceleration is varying with respect to x y z and with respect to time uh, time t. So, all in this case here the individual particle was tracking but here over the what is the motion of the fluid that is velocity field displacement represents in uh, the uh, over the domain. So, that domain means here spatial domain. So, here particular domain what is the this 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 space is fixed here and on this particular point we try to represent what is the uh, what is the velocity of this particle but we are not track the do not track how this particle is moving uh, like Lagrangian approach. So, here is the basic difference between the Eulerian and Lagrangian approach. Now, acceleration of the fluid also we can define that in Lagrangian approach is used and the fluid particle is considered for the study. The particle position vector is defined if we consider the Lagrangian approach the particle position vector is defined something uh, x bar in the is a function of x t that means position at time t time t position of y and z. So, that means space uh, x position of the particle we represent the in terms of the x t y t that x is the uh, varying with respect to time t here. So, therefore, the velocity of the particle is same as the local velocity uh, value of the velocity at this particular location, but since fluid particle is moving with the flow, here the particle is moving with the flow. So, therefore, velocity vector of the particle is same as the local value of the velocity at this particular location. And now, uh, so we can we can draw and with respect to time t, wh what is the again this location that point with that particle move at time t from one point to another point. So, that keeps on tracking in case of the Lagrangian approach. Now, once we define the vector then we represent the velocity vector also similar way. So, velocity itself is a function of the time that position vector of the fluid particle as well as the time. Uh, 
So, therefore, we can get the acceleration, the derivative of the velocity dt, dv by dt we represent the, uh, the acceleration. So, here if we perform uh, this acceleration, the uh, change of the velocity vector with respect to time that represents the acceleration here. So, I think that is all uh, in this case here we have tried to there are bas very basic fluid properties and the different approaches we follow the uh, fluid mechanics and, and this will help to understanding for the remaining part of the uh, this uh, topic or to develop um, the basic understanding which will be able to applicable in case of the, the different manufacturing processes. So, that is all thank you very much for your kind attention.